And welcome, everybody. Thank oh, you for crap, joining us not. today. I did Tuesdays with CKLS. Oh, I left my. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to keep yourselves muted unless you have a question. If I hear a little background noise, I may mute you, but please unmute yourself for a question. Or, of course, as always, you can type a question in the chat. If you want to send it to me directly or Gail directly, we will keep you anonymous if that's the way you want it to go. Today, we are going to be learning more about talking books. Uh, the beginning of this month, March 1st through 5th, was Talking Books Week. And um, so I thought this was a perfect opportunity for Kathy Ron, our Kathy Ron, to tell us a little bit more about talking books. And um, I guess that's everything. Uh, Kathy, take it away. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm glad you could join me this afternoon. I'm going to share my screen. So just give me a moment, please. Okay, is everybody, do, do you all see my screen that says Kansas? Yes, but you're fading in and out a little bit. I'm not okay, sure. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Can you hear me better now? Yes. yes. Okay. Kansas, this is the book I show you because I- I know what it is, Kathy. Every time you move your mouth, the computer mutes you. So move your mouse and then speak. Okay, sorry. That's I'll okay. Keep my hands off of that. Okay. This is the Kansas Talking Books webpage that I want to direct your attention to. Uh, Kansas Talking Books is a service that the National Library for the Blind and Print Disabled manages nationwide. It's a free service for those who have visual impairments or physical impairments. And this has all of your information. And I feel that it's important for patrons who come into your libraries that may be struggling with visual or even physical issues that prevent them from either reading a book or holding a book. And this is like your one stop shopping. And that's why I think it's important that you bookmark this. So you have this at the tip fingertips that, you know, when people come in, you've got this information readily available to you. Now, I know some of you are familiar with talking books, but I wanna point you to the left-hand side of the screen where it says eligibility. And I'm gonna click on that. These right here are the conditions that your patrons would have to have to qualify for talking books. It doesn't necessarily have to be blindness. It can be a visual impairment such as macular degeneration, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy. It can also be a physical impairment such as stroke, um, broken arm, uh, multiple sclerosis, um, Parkinson's disease where a person cannot hold a book because of tremors, those people would also qualify for the talking book service. So it doesn't have to be a visual impairment. Individuals with reading disabilities qualify for the talking book service. It can be a temporary or permanent service for your patron. Temporary, of course, would be if they did break their arm and they couldn't hold a book, then they could use the service while they're healing. A temporary visual impairment could be cataracts. They might have surgery, but before they have surgery, they can't read because of the cataracts. They can use a talking book service. I've had patrons over the years that have had that. And once they have the surgery done, they have called me up and said, guess what? I don't need talking books now because I can see perfectly. So this service is for temporary and permanent disabilities. And this page here shows you, it breaks it down even more, shows you who qualifies and who the certifying authorities are because you have to have your patron fill out an application and somebody does have to certify it. And I'm happy to announce that before reading disabilities required a doctor's signature, that's no longer the case. Just this year, that has been removed. So now anybody can sign the application under the certifying authority for reading disabilities. So that's opened up talking books to a whole lot of other patrons that normally wouldn't be able to get them. 
So I do want you to really take a special note of that. And it's reflected on our application. Our applications have been changed. So that is one of our greatest pieces of news this year about talking books, because I know it's been a source of frustration over the years for parents and teachers, especially. So happy there is one comment in the chat. Yes. Um, it says, unless the librarian is related to the applicant. Right. They found that out when they tried to sign up an OCL. So yes, and that's true because when I my dad needed talking books and I wasn't allowed to sign the application since I do work with talking books. So I had to have somebody else do that, but that's true. They don't want uh, the person, family member to sign it. It has to be somebody else. Now the family member can be put down as a contact person, but they can't sign for the certifying authority, even if they're a nurse, they're still a family member. So they have to have somebody else sign it. So that's it's a good of, point. Yeah, it's kind of like a conflict of interest or right. something to kind of prevent any kind of fraud. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, after you have established that, yes, your patron does qualify. I'm going to go back up and see if you can get into the scene. And from here, download an application or we can mail it to you. You can download and print off the application and complete it. And of course, again, have to have it signed. You can return it by mail or you can scan it and email it to Kansas Talking Books. And our regional office is in Emporia and the address is on the right hand side along with their phone numbers and their hours. But it is returned to Emporia where they will process the application and they don't let the application sit on their desk for too long. It's pretty quick. They want to get the application done and get the player and the books sent out to the patrons. Now on the application, there is a section that the patron can indicate what kind of books they like, if they like Westerns, mysteries, if they wanna select their own books themselves or if they want us to go ahead and select for them. And we can do either or, and we can do both. Patrons can access an online catalog. When Talking Books processes their catalog, they send a welcome packet and they will have the username and password for that patron to access the online catalog if they so choose. If they don't have computer access, they can call us with their book request. They can phone them in. Uh, they can write them on a piece of paper and send them in. We have all different ways that they can let us know what kind of books that they want. Emporia, Kansas Talking Books will also send out the player and usually one or two books to get the patrons started with the, the service. And they usually follow up, oh, about a week or so later with a phone call to make sure that they receive their player, their books, are they, if they're receiving what they want, are they having any trouble using the player? So they're very, very good about following up, uh, doing patron contacts. My next one is I'll have probably seen these players before along with the talking books. Now, when I first started out many years ago, we still had records, talking book records, believe it or not, and cassette tapes. Then we got rid of the records and we just had cassettes. And then we got rid of cassettes and now we're on digital and the Bard mobile app. This is what the talking book looks like. It's the size of a cassette tape, but it's a flash drive encased in plastic with a keyhole. And you insert it into the player and the you entire- lost that last bit, Kathy. Can you say that again? Um, you can insert the entire book into the player. Uh, the, the cartridge has a keyhole, so people that have arthritis have an easier way to insert and take the book out. And this is nice. There's no more turning the book over. Once you insert that book into the player, and it plays the entire book. You don't have to take it out like you used to with the old cassettes and turn them over. And that was so confusing because they were four-sided cassettes. We do have two different players. The one that you see here is the standard player. There is also an advanced player and that 
enables you to bookmark, uh, jump from chapter to chapter. It just has a few more features on it that the standard player doesn't have. These have a plug, so you can plug them in and you can keep them plugged in all the time and play them. It won't hurt it. It also plays on battery. So if it's fully charged, you have about 27 hours of playtime on the player. And I for, didn't mention earlier, but I will now, all these things go through the mail, free matter. The patron never pays postage for anything. So please don't let your post office tell you you have to pay postage to return items. You do not. Uh, I've had that happen many times over the years that machines were returned with postage on them, books were returned with postage, and they are free matter. There is a mailing label on those blue boxes that has the patron's address on one side and Emporia's on the other. When they're done with the book, they insert it back into the box, flip the card over and drop it in the mail. Free matter. Machines are the same way. They come in a cardboard box. We ask that the patron keep the box if possible because it has the flip over mailing label. So if they have a problem with the player, it won't hold a charge anymore. It's, it just won't play. They can send it back to Emporia for a replacement machine. They just put it back in the box, tape it shut, turn the card over, drop it in the mail. It's as easy as that. We don't ever want our patrons charged for anything. It is a free service at no cost to them. So this is very important that they know that they are not charged to mail things back and forth. They're not charged for lost books or lost machines. They're not charged for overdue books. We try to make it as easy as possible for them. The other thing I'll tell you about the service is it works the same way nationally. So if you sign a patron up for Talking Books in Kansas, and they come to you and say, well, I'm gonna be moving to Missouri. You don't have to cancel their service. That service will follow them to Missouri. What we do is we transfer the serial number on their player, and then they send back the books to Kansas, but they can take their player to Missouri with them to continue their service. They don't have to cancel here and start all over again in Missouri. So that makes it nice for them as well. If they have the service, and I've had this over the years happen, and they decide two weeks later, I don't want it, I'm sending it back, that's fine. But let's say they call a month after that and say, hey, you know what? I kind of miss my talking books, I want them back. We can reinstate their service. If it's been less than three years, we can just go ahead and reinstate them. If they want to cancel, we just cancel their service. We just ask that they send back the player and any talking books that they have out to them still. So we try to make it as stress-free as possible for the patrons. Does anybody have any questions so far? I don't see any in the chat yet. But let I me check this scale. Yes, I have one. So Kathy, um, the player looks a lot like an old cassette player and the book looks a lot like a cassette. What makes this different than an audio book that I can let my patrons borrow from my own collection? Okay, I'm glad you asked. First and foremost, they have to qualify to use this. They have to have the application before they can even get the player. This player, I'm glad you asked that too, has color-coded buttons. And these buttons, if you press like the play button, it'll say play. If you press the fast forward, it'll say fast forward. If you press the rewind, it'll do the same thing. It'll say rewind. Um, You're saying that it's like there's an audio cue that says yes, rewind. Yes, because on the old cassette players, you press the button and you can imagine if you're very visually impaired or blind, you press a button, you have no idea what you just pressed. This new player has the capability to tell you volume up or volume down or rewind or fast forward. And you cannot play regular audiobooks in our players. That's the other difference too. They will not play, has to be NLS cartridges that play in the talking book player. And what is your collection like? And how often do you get new titles added? Oh my, we've got a new circulation system now that we 
just started, and I say we, I mean Kansas Talking Books and Emporia, the staff there, uh, is called Download on Demand. And this is fabulous because every book in a National Library Service collection is available all the time. You never have to wait for a book to become available. You don't have to wait for a book to be returned. You don't have to wait for a book that's checked out to somebody and you're number 21 on the list. Download on demand allows us to put as many as five, 15 books on one cartridge and send that book out to the patron. Wow. Now, right now we have to flip over mail and cards. We just started our pilot download on demand program. All, our, all of our new talking book patrons in the future are going to be put on download on demand. That way, if they want a whole series, they can have the whole series on one cartridge. Oh, wow. And I mean, this is, this is really phenomenal because before um, Emporia had to wait for the new books to, to arrive, they had to process them and they only had so many copies because of shelf space. So now we don't have to worry about that. Right. And it, they're available to everybody all the time. And Michael is so excited. Michael Lang's our director for Talking Books. And this is a game changer. Uh, we are loving it. So, and there's thousands and thousands of books on BARD, Braille and Audio Reading Download. Before, if somebody wanted a certain book, we'd have to download them individually. And you know, that can take staff time and it's very clunky. And now we don't have to do that. I mean, we can get these books out right away. And as they're added to BARD, they become available the next day. So there's no more waiting. BARD is Braille and Audio Reading Download. Uh, some people choose to do the free BARD app on their Android or Apple device. Some people only want to do the BARD app. This download on demand I'm talking about are for those patrons that don't have access to BARD, whether they either they don't have the internet, they don't feel comfortable with computer technology. We can download those books on cartridges for them. The other amazing thing about download on demand is they'll have a mailing card with their address and a list of the books that are on that cartridge. They don't have to flip that card over. That card is for them to keep, recycle, whatever they want to do. The address, Emporia's address, will be affixed to the container. Okay. So we won't have to worry about it. Hey, you know, the, I've had calls in the past. I've lost my mailing card. Can you send me another one? They won't have to worry about that because it's already going to be on the box for them. Yeah, so that's, that's another great thing. Yes. I have a question. So uh -huh. if you were listening to one of the cartridges and you were used to listening to audiobooks. Is there mm -hmm. any difference in the readings or anything like that? No, um, they have you know the difference if you didn't know what was playing. No, I, I don't believe so because I've listened to them over the years. Now there's different narrators, of course, like there are with audio. Uh, some of our patrons like some narrators better than others. Um, we can also on their application and their record, um, like if they want to exclude Southern accents, for instance, we can do that. We can put an exclusion on there so they, they won't receive books of narrators that have a Southern accent or a British accent, maybe, because okay. sometimes British accents are hard for our people. But really, I don't notice any difference other than uh, end a book. I don't, I don't listen to a whole lot of audiobooks, but ours have a, a few more instructions on them. For instance, if you have several books on a cartridge, rather than going to your bookshelf and trying to find the next book, which is confusing to patrons, it will now say in the book and they can press that button and it will automatically go to the next book. So those are just a few of the things with the audio books. But basically, it's just the same thing. So um, I have told people, though, in the past on talking books, this is not an either or. You can do the BARD app. You can also have the player. Some people want to do the BARD app and have the player. They want to take the player with them, maybe. 
or they want to have access to the BARD app while they're on vacation and leave their player at home. So it's we really tailor it to what the patron wants. We let them tell us what they want to read. And that's, you know, that's the way we've always done it. But this download on demand is a real big game changer. And I'm so glad that we have instituted this. It's wonderful. That's great. I do have another question. Um, are there any advertising materials available for download or to send out or pamphlets that um, libraries can have on their desk? Yes, I have some pamphlets here that I can send and I can also get some more from Emporia. Some of our our older material has the old name on it. We're, the National Library Service is the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled. They've changed their name. So we still have some of the brochures with the old name on them. We're trying to get all new things. So as soon as I do that, I'd be happy to send any library, any brochures on talking books. We want you to have those available for your patrons because even though your patrons that come in, maybe they don't have a visual impairment and they don't need the service. They may have a family member or a friend that could use it. So it's good that you have that information out there and available so they will know and they can tell others. Word of mouth has been our best marketing tool, really. When my dad was on Talking Books, he told everybody, <laughs> you have to get talking books. They're great because my dad had a visual and a physical impairment. And he was a little reluctant at first to use the talking books. But once he got on the service, he loved them. He was always asking me, can you find me this book? Can you find that book? So I really do think your patrons that qualify for this service will enjoy it. And we have magazines as well. There's a lot of people out there that may be not book readers, but they like magazines. There's National Library Service magazines and local magazines that are produced for talking books that we circulate. Another fun thing that Emporia has are also descriptive videos. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with descriptive videos, but they tell what's going on. They don't detract from the dialogue but they tell what's going on in the background. And Emporia has a list of descriptive videos. Reports put together, but Just then they second. decided I had a webinar. There, there we go. Kathy, yes? um, this is Gail. I, I added in the chat that I would suggest that all the libraries follow the Kansas Talking Book Service on Facebook. Yes. Um, I find out all kinds of things like, like um, or this week I learned that there's something called Say My Meme Podcast, mm -hmm. and it describes the world's most relevant memes, bringing the blind and sighted people together through laughter and the power of visual description. Yes. They have, they share all sorts of really cool things that, that it's so easy to share them with your patrons. You just click share. Yes. So and great. Michael Lang also has a little video of the download on demand, and he shows how it works. And that's on Facebook. And also... The National Library Service celebrated their 90th anniversary on March 3rd. So that's also on Facebook. So yeah, you should go to Facebook and the blog as well and see all the wonderful things that are posted. And there's a wealth of information, but if you don't do anything else, look at the download on demand. It's really cool. And you can tell Michael's really excited about this new service. <laughs> I do have another question. Um, could individuals with a temporary physical handicap qualify, such as yes. a with a broken arm yes. that requires limited mm -hmm. mobility? So yes, they would absolutely. have a temporary approval. Yes, mm -hmm. they qualify as well as, again, people that have cataracts. They can't read very well at first. They have surgery. And all, you know, now they don't need talking books. They can use it temporarily as well. But yes, a temporary or permanent impairment qualifies them. So I want to show you, here's the frequently asked questions about talking books. If you've never seen this before, I'll try to take my hand off the mouse here. <laughs> Who may use the service? What types of materials are available? 
Does talking books provide textbooks? And the answer to that is no, but Learning Ally does. And if you click on that, does talking books provide textbooks? There's a link to Learning Ally for textbooks. So these are some other questions and answers that you might want to familiarize yourself with. Um, so, and page. Yeah, I looked at this today and didn't realize all the stuff that was on it. So for living, you have aging and disability resource center. You have assistive technology for Kansans. I refer a lot of individuals to that site. Uh, they will help with magnifiers, low vision aids, all sorts of things. And there's a, there's a ton of stuff. I could scroll down and show you a little bit more. The Helen Keller National Center for Deaf, Blind, Youth, and Adults. There's one in Kansas City. So there is a wealth of information um, for learning. Envision is in Wichita. They have a, a place where visually impaired or blind learn how to do everyday living skills, like how to, how to uh, mark your washer and dryer, how to mark your microwave, things like that. And they have a store where you can purchase low vision items. So these are some great resources for your patrons. If you're wondering, okay, where do I start? Where do I point them to? This is an excellent page to look at to give them those resources. Another thing that I often forget to tell everybody about is the currency reader. And talking book patrons can get this iBill. It's a small electronic device that identifies US paper currency and it fits in your pocket or purse or on a keychain. So you can get one through the state library talking books, so, you know, subscribers can get one. You can just call them or email them and ask them if you can receive one. And this is pretty neat. I have one over by my desk and I've used it and it's really neat. So we offer a lot of things for our patrons. We also have the online catalog that I talked about and the Braille and audio reading download site. And we do offer Braille books, although uh, readers of Braille books, they get their books from Utah State Library. They still have to be a talking book patron and fill out the application and their Braille books will come from Utah. Now there's Braille downloadable Braille on the BARD site, Braille and audio reading download. They have to have a refreshable display with a Bluetooth connection for that. But uh, some opt to do the e-braille, some get the physical braille books through the mail. So you may not have been aware of that because they don't talk a, lot, talk a lot about braille, mostly about the audio books themselves. So are there any other questions at this time? I have a question, Kathy, that now yes. that you're talking about Braille books, uh -huh. um, are they just fiction books or are there other things as well with Braille that's available? Other things as well, uh, there's also a National Library Service music collection. We don't have music on talking books that you can listen to. I've been asked that over the years. Don't you have stuff we can listen to, music? And no, it's musical scores and they're in Braille, large print and audio. And that's a whole big section at the National Library Service music section. It's huge. But uh, Braille, we have nonfiction, fiction. Again, we don't have textbooks. But Braille, so, go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to say Braille is kind of, a lot of people will tell me it's kind of a lost art. A lot of people are doing the e-Braille, just like all the digital technology that's available now. So um, you had mentioned magazines. Can you talk um, about other things other than magazines and the um, talking books? What else is available? Um, know what kinds of nonfiction perhaps? We have all the nonfiction books that you can think of that regular audio that are in regular audio book. Um, it's just biographies, um, just everything. 
again, we have what, what the general public has. We just don't have the textbooks. But do, I we, do I remember that once upon a time you said cookbooks? Yes, we do have cookbooks. We have some medical books, um, things like that, that, that you would normally see. We absolutely do. And we have a lot of nonfiction readers. We have readers that they don't want fiction books, but they want all the other nonfiction, popular bestsellers, true crime, those sorts of things. So we do have those. Anything else? Any, any other Missy asks, how does eBraille work? I am not very familiar with the refreshable eBraille, but there's eight dot braille displays that pop up as the download is happening on the braille machine and it's a it's connected with bluetooth and right now the national library service is doing a pilot on braille refreshable displays because at some point we hope to circulate them they're very expensive and but so i'm not go it's ahead. actually bumps that raise up yes Mm -hmm. digital content yes. so it creates a physical contact of yes. braille okay mm -hmm. it, i think i've seen one um it was like a printer it was bigger but it yes. kind of printed like a 3d printer where it uh -huh. made bumps yeah it's hard to describe if if you're not looking at it but yes if that's ex i could have said it better actually and i have no experience with it i just know that the national library Ser service is doing a test pilot on two different types of Braille refreshable displays. And the hope is that we will be able to circulate them because they are very expensive machines. So NLS is working on a lot of things for the future. They're working on a new machine. That's probably five to seven years down the road. They've moved BARD to the cloud for uh, better speeds and downloading. Um, and they implemented the uh, part where you don't have to have the doctor sign the application for the reading disability. So they're trying to transition more and more into the future. And I look for more and more exciting things to happen with talking books. I just can't tell you enough how wonderful this service is. And, and the fact that there's still a lot of people out there that, that they don't know it's available to them. And the best part, it's at no cost to them. Right. And so this, this in no way competes with those people who still might want to use their local library because no. it's, it's apples and oranges. Absolutely not. It's just like us. I have print books, but I also have a Kindle, but I, I can also use Hoopla. I'm not, those aren't competing. These are all resources at our fingertips that we can use. So they can use your audiobooks. They can use talking books. We're not competing. We're enhancing services for our patrons. We're offering them this service along with the services that you offer. And I also want to let you know, too, that we have a summer reading program, just like the regular summer reading program. It's for children and adults. We have prizes. We have weekly prize drawings. And I believe that Maggie, who's one of the reader advisors, she will probably get that information out in April about the summer library program. They have a phone in book club that's quarterly. I just attended one a couple days back. Um, we could bring our own book this time and tell what we like to read rather than everybody reading the same book. So that's also a fun thing to get involved with that we offer our talking book patrons. We try to offer them just like you, you all do with your summer reading and your book clubs. And you know, schools can sign up for talking books. Institutions can sign up for talking books. We have many people in institutions like nursing homes, assisted livings that use talking books. So anybody that qualifies can sign up for talking books. And we, we don't require that they read a certain number of books. If they only want one book a month, that's fine. If they want 10 books a week, we can do that too. I will say on the download on demand system, there will not be any overdue notices go out ever because nothing will be overdue. Unlike the previous circulation system where we sent out the only copy of that James Patterson book and it's been overdue and we sent a notice, 
Now, when I say overdue notice, that doesn't mean they pay an overdue fine. They don't. We just ask that they send the book back so we can send it to the next reader. The download on demand is going to do away with overdue notices. So I am. That's so cool. This is Gail. Mm -hmm. um, in the last year, I've been um, diagnosed with glaucoma and cataracts. And um, I first allowed myself to be kind of sad about losing my vision like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I've worked with Kathy long enough to know that I would not lose my reading. And no. um, that was wonderful. And I even get goosebumps now when I think about it. And this, that's our slogan. So all can read. So all, all may read. And we have had people, I've had patrons that have told me this has been a lifesaver for them. They lost their sight. They used to be an avid reader. They had to stop reading, but now they can read again. It's a different way of reading, but it's just like listening to your audiobooks that you check out from the library. So, you know, I just want you to market the system, market the service to your patrons. If you don't want or feel uncomfortable talking to your patrons, have them call me. I'd be happy to talk to them. Uh, if you feel uncomfortable filling out the application, I can fill the application out for them. They can call me, I can fill it out, I can sign it. I just wanna make this as easy for you as possible as well. But you'll find all this great information on this Kansas Talking Book site on your State Library of Kansas website. So, downloading, printing off the applications, easy. I would tell you though that you can fold it up. I downloaded one earlier today. I don't know if you can see right here. And I folded it up and you can place a stamp on it. You can tape it like right here, but I feel more comfortable myself putting it in an envelope sealed and it has to have a stamp on it. You can't send those free matter. At least I don't recommend sending those free matter through the mail. And the reason I put mine that I receive in an, in an envelope is just for security purposes. They have people's birth dates on them and, and address information. So just, you know, that's what I do anyway. When I send them out to Emporia, I just go ahead and put it in an envelope and seal it and put a stamp on it. I do have a couple questions for you. Kathy. Okay. Great. Um, one Gail answered in the chat, but I was going to put it out there anyway. Do you have any of those um, pen readers or um, is there any plan to put the pen readers into circulation at all? Pen readers? Like for instead of the Braille e refreshers, they're pen readers? That I'm not sure. As, as of this point, I only know about the refreshable readers okay. right now. That could come in the future though. Okay. Um, another question, does talking books work with people who have dyslexia and other reading differences or learning differences? Yes, um, one of the reading disabilities, of course, is dyslexia. So it, reading disabilities on that encompasses a lot of different types. And again, I've been asked about, I know this isn't a reading disability, but I've been asked a lot about autism. And I will say that Autism in and of itself, maybe not, but if they have a visual impairment or physical impairment that goes along with that, just like the reading, then they will qualify for talking books. But I've had people come in and say, well, can I just check these out and listen to them while I'm driving down the road? And the answer is no. Because <laughs> they're they very specific. They're very specific, specific yes. Person. And and talking books, of course, are mixed up with audiobooks, regular audiobooks. I'm from the library all the time because they think, well, audiobook, why can't I check it out? But it's for a certain population of people that um, can use them. All right. Uh, another question. When mm -hmm. you say schools can sign up, would the district be able be the one to do that? Or are we talking about special ed department, for example? Um, if the district signed up, that would cover a student who is injured and temporarily couldn't hold a book question mark or is each sign up for an individual well they ask that the teacher sign up for an institutional application which is not on this site i hope to get it on this one it's through the through nls 
that they can get the institutional application. But the teacher normally signs up, the uh, principal signs as a certifying authority, and then usually a list of students who are going to be using talking books is listed on the application. Now the student can have the player at home and at school both. So I would say start with the teachers, the individual teachers in the classroom. Okay. And if that's wrong, I will. I can uh, find out from Michael to be sure, or you can also contact Michael. If I'm not in and you need that question answered, you can contact Michael Lang at Kansas Talking Books. But I believe in the past, that's how we've had it done. The teacher has signed up and then a list of students that are eligible for Talking Books. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put that phone number in the chat and then the, we have another comment on okay. here. Um, a lady from our church lost her husband, then got macular de degeneration, so she mm -hmm. could no longer quilt. She found about about she found out about talking books, and she said it was like finding a friend. Yes, that's that's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that, and I do encourage people that you know they're reluctant to try it, and we tell them if you try it and you don't like it, it's okay. You can cancel it and send it all back. And then if you did that, and again, they decided, you know what, I kind of missed that service. Why did I send that back? We can reinstate them. Kathy? Yes. Imagine, now it's going to take a lot of work for all of us to do this, but imagine we're in an absolutely normal world, not wearing masks, and we can go and visit people. Mm -hmm. um, if we have somebody in our area sign up and mm -hmm. they're having trouble navigating BART or they're having trouble um, using the player, what can we do? I can help them. I have gone out to libraries before and met the person at the library and helped them with their player. We've had patrons come in here before and I've helped download the BARD app onto their iPad for them. So yes, there is help. There's also phone in help again to Emporia. All their readers advisors uh, can walk people through the BARD app. And I forgot to mention any talking book reader is eligible to use BARD and the BARD app, but there's a separate application for that. And the library that, that is Talking Books in Emporia can help them fill out that application. Or when they fill out the original talking book application, if they wanna be BARD only, they can have that written on their application. So when Emporia receives that, they'll see, oh, this is a BARD only patron and they'll get that process started for them with setting up the application for the email, the username and password. Because you have, have to have that. Yep, I have another question. Mm -hmm. um, so we live in Kansas mm -hmm. and we know that if we want braille, they're gonna come from Utah. I have an aunt who lives in Northern California who has um, macular degeneration pretty bad. Um, and they spend a lot of money buying um, audiobooks through audible oh. um is this service available to her or yeah. is this just kansas nope this service is available nationwide all over the united states so again it works the same way now not everybody may be doing download on demand right now but as far as the regular talking books the application process the sending the players and the books or BARD, all of that is the same all across the nation. And that's what makes this service, again, a lot more usable and user-friendly. If you move from one state to another, you don't have to cancel. You don't have to go through the hassle of canceling your service of one state and starting all over again in another state. This is what makes this so nice. We even can put in a temporary address for somebody. We have what we call snowbirds that go to Florida in the winter time. So I've had patrons call me up and say, hey, Kathy, put in a temporary address for me in Florida. I'll be there till March, but I'll call you when I get back, send my books down there. So we can do that. We send their books to Florida and then they'll call me and say, okay, I'm back in Kansas now, send my books to my regular address. So we do that. We try again as, to make it as easy for them stress-free for them as possible. 
So this is a wonderful service and I don't want your patrons to miss out. So again, if you don't feel comfortable with some of the aspects of talking books, please refer them to me or call me, give me their name address, I'll call them. Um, I'll be happy to do that. This is what I do. I market the talking book service. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to go out anywhere to do health fairs or anything like that. But I hope that changes later on this year. But I'd be happy to stop into your library too if you have patrons at your library that you want me to talk to. I'd be happy to do that as well. So don't hesitate to email me or call me. Are there any more questions that you have for me? I don't have any in the chat. Okay. I'm gonna go through and see if I see any hands raised. I don't see any hands raised. So um, no new questions at this time. Okay, some interesting information. NLS celebrated, like I said, their 90th anniversary on March 3rd. So if you go to the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled, you can click on 90th anniversary. And it's really neat. You can see the timeline of talking books. Kansas joined in 1970. We had our 50th anniversary last year. We were going to have a big celebration and all kinds of stuff. And then guess what? We couldn't because of the pandemic. But the 90th anniversary information is so cool. Talking books started way back in 1931. And it goes through the timeline of certain states when they started. Um, different aspects of the talking book service. And that website also has a lot of resources for you to look at and to read and to find information out about. I just wanted to show you ours for Kansas so you would have access to the application and those types of things. But do explore the NLS website. It's really fun and it's really neat. And there's a lot of good resources on there for you. So Mary Beth, will you put that link or that web address in the chat? Yes. Great, thank you. So that's all I have for the presentation today. Again, play around on the site, just look at everything, familiarize yourself with the different things on here, the frequently asked questions, the players, getting started, the eligibility. Uh, Kathy, the I just clicked on something that I had never noticed before. Yes. And it was um, patron comments. Oh. And um, I pasted one in the chat, but there's, there's tons of them in here. Um, mm -hmm. It's just marvelous. I want to thank you so much for the service. My mom had cancer for the last 22 months of her life. Mm -hmm. The sleepless night, sitting in a chair for hours, getting her chemo and in the hospital room. She enjoyed your tape so much. You have a wonderful service. Thank you again for the so many hours of enjoyment you gave my mom. Oh. And there was, I just read one about uh, a young woman who is now in community college and she had dyslexia and she mm -hmm. had talking books. Colleen Sipple says, thanks, Kathy. It's good to see how far they have come since oh. my daughter used it in grade school. Yes, they have come a long way. And thank you. They really have. My brother could have used this service. And you know, this is my passion. We didn't know anything about talking books when he was growing up and he was almost legally blind. So, and that was really a shame. He really could have benefited from this service. So I don't want anybody to miss out that can benefit from it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share. There you are. I'm back. <laughs> so I thank you all for being patient with me. This is new to me. I, I'm, I'm more equipped to do in-person presentations than I am Zoom, but we got through it. So you did a great it. job. A great I think job. That everybody will agree. Yes. Your, your passion is, is wonderful. <laughs> And, and I, like I said, don't hesitate to call or email me if you need anything. So, um, and I, I learned something that I didn't realize um, 
that you could do the uh, multiple downloads, the oh. um, direct demand downloads and send them a, yes. a, a cassette or whatever, a player disc of- The whole books. series of books. That's awesome. Yes. I'm so jealous for that. I am so <laughs> overdue. <laughs> I know, Michael, Michael on another uh, webinar showed two stacks of books, like 30 books. And then he showed three um, cartridges. And he said, these 30 books would fit probably on at least on one cartridge. Wow. Can you imagine? And they won't have to have all that shelf space anymore. They won't no. have to get physical copies. I think they have it wherever they go. They won't have to yeah. look for the next cartridge or yes. yeah. And the frustrating thing, of course, series were always frustrating because <laughs> patron had book one and two and book four is available, but not book three. Mm -hmm. so and then some books were on bard only we couldn't get a physical copy at all so there again mm -hmm. that was another problem another issue but Kathy, in the chat i put that i had the the great pleasure of um doing a talking books tour a little while ago so it couldn't have been last year even it had to be the year before that <laughs> um and they have a recording studio there yes they do there's so much, and I'm and I always forget something. Even when I do an in-person presentation, I think, "Oh, I forgot to mention that." <laughs> but yes, they do have a recording studio, and they've re produced locally local Kansas books too for Talking Books. So excellent. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna make sure I save save the chat. Um, there's lots of compliments in there for you, Kathy. I want oh, to make sure you. that you see. Well, Kathy, wonderful presentation. presentation. You rock. So. Well, thank you all for listening to me. And <laughs> again, if I jumped all over the place, uh, forgive me for that. Right. This is different, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I am going to stop recording.